Hello and welcome to the LGBT Family and Games Community Podcast. My name is James, and today I am joined by Xavier. Hi. Hello. And Mars. Hi, just Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, not James Charles. Imagine not James Charles. Wow. Yeah, hi. I'm Mars. Wow. Oh, I'm starting strong. I'm starting strong. You, you are starting strong. And I don't have a high sisters on the, the soundboard in here, unfortunately. Damn. <clears throat> missed opportunity. It's okay. It is a missed yeah. opportunity. But anyway, so uh, today's episode, our topics are non-existent. <laughs> we have none. I don't know any. No. Have We're... you guys heard anything in the news or... Entertainment-wise, games, anything? Well, as far as news, maybe that basketball player stuff. Dwayne Wade? It was, is it Dwayne Wade or is it? Yeah, Dwayne, Dwayne Wade with uh, daughter Zaya. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, as far as games, there's a few out there. There's a few like hot topics coming up that people are very excited about. So yeah, sure. And- Let's pull up this thing about Dwayne Wade because I I do I think I saw something on Twitter. So let's, I have something pulled aside. So in this article, he's basically saying that he's leaving Florida or has left Florida. Uh, let's listen to the video. What do you have to say to some of those state legislators who maybe <laughs> have your jersey in their closets, who came and brought <laughs> their <laughs> kids to your game to yeah. cheer for you? Uh, well, you know, I think that's another reason why I don't live in that state. A lot of people don't know that. I have to make decisions for my family. Not just personal individual decisions. I mean, obviously the taxes is great. You know, having Wade County is great, but my family would not be accepted or feel comfortable there. Um, so that's why yeah, the I mean the taxes are there. great, but yeah, they are. Yeah, that's kind of where great. it ends. That's it. I mean, I, honestly, my opinion on this is I think that's beautiful. The fact that instead of him thinking about himself, he's thinking about his family and how his family is going to. Raising his kids, raising his family, and, and living, and their family living in a state where they're technically really not even like accepted. And in Florida, one of the, the politicians' like uh, support staff or something, there was a study that was released about how many LGBT families are like leaving the state or planning, potentially planning on leaving the state. And uh, this lady like put the waving hand emoji above the article on Twitter. Basically saying bye-bye. We don't yeah, need Yeah, bye-bye. You. Like, we don't care. Later. We're humans, dude. I just don't understand it. Why do you care what, what happens behind closed doors? You got me. It, it doesn't make no sense. I'm not caring what kind of basic things happening behind closed doors in your household. Like... <laughs> Why are you worried about? I don't know why are you worried about the exciting <laughs> things that are happening behind my closed door. You know, this makes no sense. I don't know. It amazes me living here because, like, you know, I try to be like really neighborly and meet people, and some of our neighbors are really old, and they don't seem to have a problem with us. But I guess it... they never have a problem as far as openly telling you. But they deep down they do have an issue with it because um, when I go down to Florida, you know, I don't get the like that homophobic vibe but like you can tell you know when i go to like the pool house or something like that or at the gym and like well the oh the yeah gated community you get the vibe that like ew why is he here and i get double right because the the gated community is predominantly white so i get double look poc and gay you know even though i don't present myself as a gay person per like public or how the general people tend to say like oh you don't look gay Bro. daddy chill even though but i don't know what even not even supposed to mean you don't look gay but yeah i still get the looks it doesn't make no sense why do you, you care you look pretty gay i look pretty gay to you yeah Thanks. you look you look like one step away from a drag queen because yeah. i'm a superstar where's your wig <laughs> hold on <laughs> Imagine no. if you had, I would too. <laughs> if I had one, I would wear that wig. I would wear the out that wig. Okay. Yeah. If you had one and was wearing it, that would be hilarious. I, you would have got no shame. The award. I would. I have no shame. I don't care what people think. But yeah, I think that's. I think it's nonsense. You know, it is what it is. 
what is this shit about Jason Momoa? <laughs> what about Jason Momoa? Hold on. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> apparently, apparently, <laughs> apparently, there was a bike ride to remember. Okay, Medea. A bike ride to remember. Let's yeah, see. Apparently, I don't have to blur it's anything. <laughs> Goes off his fridge and gem. I'm mad at him. Come on, Aquaman. The 43 year old action star invited uh, Men's Health to get a peek into his fridge and gem, but what the outlet hadn't anticipated was that Momoa opening the door to his gym in nothing but a pink robe and a shark tooth necklace. I didn't know you were coming. I should have dressed up if I knew. Equipped. Ain't nobody told you to come and announce. Well, oh, I already know. Next time, I ain't saying anything. I'm knocking. Yeah. I'm just looking at this and I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I feel I, like that's just staged. You know, it's like, yeah, that's staged. I call BS. Yeah. He loves his Guinness. Have you ever searched his, like his workout and like eating regimen for like Aquaman? No, was I haven't. In, no. I can't it's imagine. insane. It was just poultry. It was just pure chicken and a Guinness every day. Seriously? literally that's all it was i mean maybe something else on the side but like the like main thing was like a guinness and chicken and that's how he got so massive for aquaman even though i mean he is he's a big dude let me see (laughs) 96 calories i mean it's the calories count 125 calories one gram of protein i don't know i guess it depends on the size bottle but I don't know if that's like nutritionally helpful, but he did get in shape. Xavier's actually helping out quite a bit. I'm getting a bunch of pings on Discord with links. I am curious about this Beyonce article. Why is she? F- oh, the taxes talk- thing. Put that you up. Know about this? Let's talk about it. Yeah, I heard all about right, it. All right, all right. Talk about it. Tell me more. Because I had to pay I heard taxes. About it. I didn't really. Yeah, well, same. I Read pay it. every year. Sorry, but I had to pay above. We had to pay 700 over what my withholding was, which sucked. Here we go. Uh, he's fighting a 2.7 million tax bill and notice of deficiency. Beyonce owes 805000 in additional tax and 661000 in penalty. For 2018. Holy crap. Wow. They're trying to, they're trying to and hit interest her due. hard. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Beyonce argues in her position that this was an error on the IRS part and claims they refused millions. However, I mean, fight. Fight the power. If you feel like they made a mistake, they made a mistake. I don't see why not. Using a dollar's worth of deductions attributes to charitable contributions carry over. I mean, charitable contributions? You're trying to tax her? Uh Uh-uh. That's not bad. Uh Uh-uh. I don't like that. I wonder what her actual, like, full tax bill is. Because it's insane, probably. I mean, obviously, like they're saying that she owed eight hundred thousand more than what it was, and then a one hundred sixty thousand dollar penalty. Uh, oh my god! Over a quarter million dollars in penalties from twenty nineteen. I can't even. And that's and it's not saying that they she she didn't pay taxes. It's just saying that she has back taxes. Yeah, it's saying that she short paid, right? Like she owes yeah. more than what that was. So imagine, oh wow, oh wow, that's insane. So Xavier, why don't you why don't you mention the next one you want to talk about? Because like I said, you've you've sent a few. Well, I'm just posting them a little bit of curation, and then I figured you just pick out anything that caught your eye. There was Slim Pickens. I went to a few different. I places. told you there were Slim Pickens. There was Slim. Yeah, it's been. Like, it's tough. So, like, usually for these episodes, um, because I've gotten some feedback, obviously, like, people get tired of, like, seeing the LGBT stuff. So, usually for these episodes, like, I try to go to, like, Twitter and see what's trending on Twitter in case, like, people aren't kind of clued into what's going on. Twitter's like a cesspool. I'll be Uh, real. Yeah. Like, it's getting, like, it's actually depressing to go on Twitter sometimes because it's, like, all... I feel like the algorithm has been changed to pump in as much of the controversial shit as possible. I think so. I agree. Too. I agree. Because yeah. like I all that I'm seeing are all these political things. And of course, like Elon's random silly tweets. 
all the time. Yeah. So I can't like, for example, oh. like right now, what's trending trending on Twitter according to my feed is uh, Chris Pratt. I don't know why he's trending. Mila Kunis is trending. Guardians of the Galaxy coming to an end. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. I need to watch that. Oh, it's a must. Yeah. Ribeye is must. trending. Let's see what's trending for me. Let's see. Return of the Jedi? The Giants is trending. GTA 5 is trending. Drews is trending. Dolphins is trending. And trending. And Cardi B is trending. Cardi B? And North... North Palm Beach, for some reason, is trending. Cardi oh, I know why that's wise. trending. You like Palm Beach, right? I do like West Palm Beach, yeah. That's why it's trending. They're following all this, the stuff that you do. Yeah? Oh, yeah. uh, yep. Cardi B is trending because she was in New York today. Why was she in New York? Maybe some legal things? Oh, Possibly. Mila Kunis was trending because she's not been selected for the Fantastic Four. Really? I am floored. Um, th- I, this is probably a meme. Mila Kunis reportedly in talks to play Fantastic Four's The Thing. That's got to be a meme. She's talented. She could do it. I'm sure that she could. So Ed Sheeran popped up twice for me. I had heard about this copyright controversy, and I loosely understand what's going on. And from what I understand, they're basically saying that Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On was more than just an inspiration for Ed Sheeran's Thinking Out Loud. So they're saying that he actually took whole portions of the song Let's Get It On, almost unabridged, to create Thinking Out Loud. He, of course, is saying that's not true. And apparently, he revealed that he can't read music during the copyright trial. Now, what I that means? I mean, I don't know what that means. But a lot of there, there will used to be a lot of musicians that didn't really. That's what I was gonna say. Know how to read music, so why does that even matter? There was a no one will know this, right? I only know this because you know, I was raised by old people, like a jazzy funk musician. I think his name was EOC. His name was Bobby Blue Bland. He was a famous guitarist. There's a movie about him. He didn't read music either. Also, he sung his guitar licks. He wasn't a formal singer either. He's highly, highly awarded, has many accolades in his, I think he's passed on, I'm not sure, but has many accolades in his genre of music. Couldn't read music, and he wasn't a formal singer. He told everyone that. He just sung his guitar licks. So I, I, I don't think it matters. I think what matters is the work. Am I going to enjoy what you've put out there? Yeah, I think the issue was... You know, obviously, if he can't read music, maybe he's pulling more of his inspiration from existing works and then therefore infringing on copyright. But I think there was a... But, Go ahead. But I'm trying to, like, in my head, look, listen at, like, like Ed Sheeran songs that I, I like or appreciate. And none of them sound similar to anything else. So it don't make no sense. Well, if you play them side by side, like play from like from the start, if you start one, play five seconds of one, maybe 10 seconds of well, probably five seconds of one, start the other, play, play that. They do sound similar. But the question is, was it intentional? Was it malicious? And also, I guess there's a school of thought. If it was unintentional, should he still hold some liability? No. I don't. I personally don't think so. So um, what I was going to say is, I mean, statistically and physically, there are only so many different combinations of notes that you can make. Right. Um, There's a limited number of chords. Yep. So according to scientists it'd, or a mathematician, there would be 82 and one half sextillion possible 10 no- melodies. So... It's inevitable, I think, for yeah. some crossover to happen and for things to sound similar, even though they're different. I don't think it's a str- any stretch of the imagination that there you know, might be some similarities. And, and there's so many, I don't know. I think there's like, there's so many different songs like Under Pressure. And right. what was the one? 
Um, well, we can examine modern, you know, just like throughout the, we'll, we'll even go way back, right? It was just kind of before my time, but let's go back to the 80s, 90s, and even like... 80s, 90s, and today. And to- <laughs> Three chords. Three to four chords for the whole song. Three to four. Some of them have the same progression. No one ever talks about that, right? So, yeah, music's music. Of course, some things are going to be eaten, regurgitated, and remade. That's yeah. It's not like it's not like he intent. I don't. I personally don't feel like he intentionally tried to like bite off of someone or take someone's melody or whatever and try to make it his. I think they're making a big deal out of out of nothing because mm-hmm. you have people like Elvis, for example, rest in peace, who actually stole music from people, yeah, and got famous for doing it, yeah, and took culture from people and got famous for doing it. You know what I'm saying? So people should be more war- more worried about other people like that taking identities from other musicians who worked hard and created these melodies. And and I don't know music like that, so I'm I don't know the good terminology for it, but. I think they should do, you know, you know how they did like leave Britney alone, you know, leave Ed Sheeran alone, you know, <laughs> Jesus, please. So, so yeah, go so ahead. Y'all know I Will Always Love You. It was the Dolly Parton song that was made, I, I personally think made famous by Whitney Houston. Help me. Thank you. You're welcome. That's my, what that's by Whitney Houston. Your personal POCs fart. have your back. <laughs> Wow. But I actually, I heard this on the radio and I thought it was really cool. It was kind of, or I can't remember if I saw it, heard it on the radio or saw it on TV or something. But Elvis was in talks with Dolly Parton or, or his manager, uh, Colonel Tom Parker, was in talks with Dolly Parton about him, Elvis doing a cover of I Will Always Love You. But it came down to what the rights would be for that song. And I think he wanted something like 60% of right all rights to that song in perpetuity and dolly parton said no of yeah absolutely not and then went on to you know for it to be made even i think more famous by whitney houston i'm sure elvis could have done a great job with the song but he could have done a great job not as big as whitney i I, yeah i think whitney is that song yes so when people hear that song, they hear Whitney. They don't hear Dolly. They don't hear Yeah, I don't hear Dolly. Else. That's it's kind of stuff, now, right? Because her ver- she's the originator. Her version, Dolly's version, is beautiful. I've heard it. In contrast. But it is not the power ballad that Whitney did. It's like the difference between Oh pretty much. Yeah. Well, you lost me. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was looking for I was looking for the oh my. Oh yeah, my. the oh my I was yes. looking for that. <laughs> no. Dolly's version Dolly's a high pitch voice. Yeah, she's she's a an octave or two higher, but like her version is more of a I will always love you as a matter of a fact. I'm in love with you. You know this. This is just to confirm with you that I will always okay. love you. Whitney's version is, look here, I love your <laughs> dumb ass, and you need to understand this, that, you know, we, you ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. We might Toxic. be apart. Toxic. Love it. Toxicity. Love it. For real. I wanted to touch on, like, a couple of, th- a couple of other things. So, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I guess this is the prequel, Hunger Games prequel. So my question is... I mean, it's a movie to me. I don't I'm, even know that it's that to me. I think it's. I think the whole Hunger Games thing... I think it's too late. Too little, too late. Well, I don't know if this is... Uh, oh, who was the author? Su- is it Susan Collins? Did Hunger Games? I... Because I remember when the Hunger Games first came out, it was actually while I was still working with Barnes and Noble, a nominal series, but it was just the few books, like the, the Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Mocking Jay. Mocking Jay. So I don't know when this, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, came out uh, as a book. I do not. 
I didn't dive too deeply Let's into see. the headline, but it's a prequel for sure. So whatever's going to happen in it is prior to the Hunger Games, to the first. Okay. Movie. Yeah. So it looks like the book was released in 2020. So this movie's coming way fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd be interested um, to see it. It might be a prequel series. I don't know if it's just just well. It's the prequel to the Hunger Games movie 2012 and the fifth installment in the Hunger Games film series. That's going to star Tom Blythe, Rachel Zegler, Peter Dinklage. I might watch it just for Peter. Hunter Schaefer, Josh Who's Peter? Andrews, Peter Dinklage, Tyrion oh. Lannister from the. Why did it just leave my brain? Somebody help. I got him. Game, I got Game him. of Thrones. Dog. Game of Thrones. Right. I, I might tune in just for him. Viola Davis. We got to tune in from Viola. Yes. Sorry. Josh oh, Andrews yeah. is like and Scott, excuse me, Jason Swartzman. Jason Swartzman. Isn't Jason Swartzman back? Is Viola Davis in um, How to Catch a Murder. Uh, How to that. Catch a Murder. She was phenomenal in that. Yeah. She was also in uh, The Help. She's oh, in the Woman she King. Extens- she was in the Woman King. She yeah. has an extensive resume. Yeah, she has a. Oh, so in she was in both of the separately developed and directed Suicide Squad movies. She played the same character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was... yeah. She was good. Yeah, look. What's her name? Help. Maria. Oh, How to go with her? Uh, let me. Oh, me she's an heir. The uh, Nike documentary oh. or film, I guess you could say. She's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah, she has an extensive resume. But I really I, I like the way she portrays her characters. And that show was actually very good. Stop watching it for some reason, but it was very good. Stop watching what? Uh, Amanda Waller. Murder. Sorry. I think we stopped at some point in How to Get Away with Murder. I don't know why we stopped. I played Amanda, Amanda Waller and suicide yeah Uh, and that's just what i was kind of getting at i just couldn't remember and i had to look it up those two suicide squad movies were written produced and directed separately of each other and they recast her um she has a a certain gravitas that's just on she definitely fits the bill for the role that she played in the suicide squad just unrelentless unforgiving Absolutely. My way or the highway. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, back to um, the prequel, prequel. Uh, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Mm-hmm. I think, I don't know, I'd probably give it a try. Yeah. I don't know. If I did, it would be for Peter Dinklage, who is also an amazing actor. So another... Uh, I'm, I'm actually waiting for this to come out uh, on audiobook. I don't, I can't remember if the audiobook releases on the second as well. But The Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan, uh, this is actually going to have a gay protagonist. And Rick Riordan's the author of uh, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, like the Percy Jackson series. They did, they tried to do like two movies, but then I can't remember the production company was. They axed it because they didn't do a great job with it. But I think now that's going to go to Netflix. They're going to do like a reboot and do it in like a show form instead of trying to do like a big movie theater thing. But um, this is cool because it's going to be kind of in the same world. And Rick Riordan has actually come out and been very vocal about how um, some of J.K. Rowling's comments are harmful. As a person that's in kind of the spotlight, how those things that, that J.K. Rowling says can be very harmful to others. You uh, and he's been a, a, talking. <laughs> yeah, she does. Yeah. Like, I struggle because I do think there's always going to have to be a discussion about cisgender female in relation to, to trans female and those shared spaces that's going to be, you know, problematic. And we do have to solve for that. In fact, what's his name? Um, science guy, the, the astrology guy. Ooh, Bill Nye or I don't know. Uh, the better one. Neil deGrasse Tyson, yes. Neil deGrasse Neil, Tyson. Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. Uh, he actually w- was doing an interview, and it's I, I, so. I'm going to play this. Uh, and Ben Shapiro. Hold on, I think we. What was the wait? So why was J.K. Rowling brought up again? 
Oh, just because Rick Riordan, this author, we've gone down a little bit of a rabbit hole. The author of The Sun and uh, The Sun and the Star, which is a new novel by Rick Riordan, um, who's kind of a similar author as far as audience as like the um, Suzanne Collins for the Kill the Mockingjay, the movie that we were talking about. Right. Yes. His new book is going to have a, a gay protagonist. Okay. And he's been very that. out outspoken about some of the things that J.K. Rowling has said. Outspoken in what sense? Like telling her like she needs to shut up or something? Basically, yeah. I mean, he's just said, you know, a lot of her comments are very harmful. That, you know, we should value people for who they are and not try to, you know, dictate. Who, That's a who whole they are. different topic, that whole J.K. Rowling. And it, yeah, it depends, I, on, it depends on who you talk to. It's a lot. Everybody just needs to understand that everyone is entitled to their own opinions. That's it. Yeah. Now, it's up to you to decide if you're going to let that affect your life. That's on you. Sorry. But yeah, let's move on. Cause there, well, I did, but because we kind of got on that topic, I, I wanted to bring this up because I, I thought that this was uh, informative. Uh, this has been Shapiro talking to Neil deGrasse Tyson about the genderism. advent of science. One of those areas is the area of transgenderism. The argument that is typically made by gender theorists is that gender is entirely separate from sex. You've seen the argument made that it makes no difference on average if men are stronger than women are and that if we were to allow transgender women to compete with non-transgender women, then this would somehow not disadvantage biological women. And this seems to me absolutely ascientific, that if we're actually going to have a discussion about gender and sex, that that should be based in data, which suggests that mammals... opine on this. Um, This only matters because we segregate most, nearly all sports by gender. Otherwise, why do you even give a shit? <laughs> what what someone Rican in identifies with? So this is, <laughs> we live in a free country and with consenting adults and people free expression of who and what they are. Now, an adult level, I agree with you. I, I think it, it does matter what you that, teach that's your children. And so there's the matrix of, you know, what you are biologically, how you express yourself, who you choose as a sexual partner. If we actually live in a free country, as we tell ourselves, people's freedom to behave in any of those ways should not boom yeah. you at all. Yeah. Nor are they... Th- that's why I wanted to share this. ...behave that way. Booyah. Okay? Well, this is yeah. for their own freedoms, because well, we live in a free country. Now, what is unresolved here is, what do you do with sports? It's unresolved. And... I follow that closely, and I don't see any, I don't see any meaningful solutions to come down off of that. Um, we know that hormones manifest differently in different people, and have, this is the whole thing with steroids. Steroids are hormones, right? And we rallied against steroids in professional sports because it gives you an undue advantage. So, I, and I've tried to think of what the future of sports would be in the world of a gender spectrum. And it may be, you don't specify whether it's a male or female sport, you just take measurements of what your hormonal balances are. And so you compete based on your hormones. So <laughs> I, I thought this I was uh, appropriate to bring up because I, I feel like Neil deGrasse Tyson did a very good job of just pointing out the obvious that some of this stuff that we see is bullshit. But the rest of the interview goes pretty much the same way. I mean, he just comes in with uh, some common sense stuff. Every- well, Here's something I hadn't heard talked about. Um, tiptoeing and I don't know how deep the water is, but... Say it. I can pull it out and post if I need to. <laughs> so here's what you don't hear widely. Okay? Because when I go on YouTube and social media, I suspend a lot of disbelief, right? Because I want to be entertained. So I suspend disbelief. So I try to approach it like this, like I'm just sitting in a movie theater and I don't know what movie's going to show and the screen comes on and then there it is, right? So from that perspective, one of the things I haven't widely heard except for very recently, late last year into this year, is the if we're talking about uh, transgender women in uh, previously dominated um biological women's sports 
I haven't heard a lot other than over the last few months from biological women in those sports. So obviously it's not a 50, 50 split, right? So I would like to think that if it was a huge deal to the women in the sports themselves, that they would be speaking up. Now we have to remember that we live in a male dominated society, right? A cis male dominated society. So there is an argument that could be made that those women aren't speaking up for a, we'll just say a certain reason. And in this male dominated society, there are men out there that are, maybe they are truly trying to be chivalrous. Maybe they're masquerading and white knighting. I don't know, but they say they're speaking up for those women and making decisions for that, you know, that woman, that woman's sport. I think we need to hear from the women who are actually playing the sport. Boom. And if the if the biological women that are playing the sport say, yeah, we we're not exactly okay with it, but let's see where it goes, or if they want to put a stop to it, it was their sport to begin with. It was, you know, it's like I can't come into your house, regardless of whether I think you live like a pig or not, which you don't. Your house is very beautiful. Um, and tell you that you know that's the wrong sofa you need to take out your trash why are their dishes still on the counter you know why aren't you rinsing your dishes before you put them into your dishwasher i can't do that oh you know that's your okay house wait but i gotta stop you there because the dishes do get washed before they go in the dishwasher oh (laughs) yeah i don't care who you are (laughs) ain't no oink oink on this side (laughs) they're getting washed I don't want I mean, baked on spaghetti from last week on my plate when I'm having eggs right. and toast. <laughs> right. We need to hear from those. We need to hear from the women. And if they're not being vocal, then maybe the approach needs to be is to ask them. It's time. It, this is bigger than than what it was before. We need to hear from you. It's your sport. What do you want? Well, I think some of those conversations have happened. I will say this in defense of women. And I'm not a woman, obviously. Uh, so take what I say with a grain of salt. I- I'm not a woman and I don't present it as one. And I'm not transitioning to become a woman. <laughs> Are you sure? But I'm, po- <laughs> I'm positive about that. Yes, we're good. I think one of the issues has been the backlash that women see when they do share their concerns is they get berated and harassed and called TERFs. A trans exclusionary radical feminist. Thank you. And okay. <laughs> I saw the question in, in your head. Yeah, I'm like, huh. <laughs> and I feel like, and this is kind of what I go back to, and I've been repeating the same line over and over and over and over again on multiple different episodes of the podcast. We need to recognize the fact that we're a minority, and as a minority, we're subject to societal norms and behavior expectations. And we need to be respectful of that. And some of the behaviors that we've had as a community has been to berate people when they don't agree with us and don't share our views. I'm not saying that we shouldn't speak out about our perspective and make it known, but it's a fine line between that and harassing somebody and then making all of the LGBT look bad. Right. Yeah, percent. Yeah. This was happening because yeah, it was happening. At, people are becoming a little too aggressive with with everything, and it's across not the just board. the trans issue. It's just everything across the board. Everything. And what people need to start realizing is, because of the aggressiveness, we have moved back in time instead of move forward in the future. They're trying to take everything away from us that we that our ancestors or the before us had worked so hard for us to receive. And they just gotten so spoiled. The word is spoiled that they're not realizing <laughs> that they're doing more harm than good to all of us yep. because everybody's affected. You know, the conversation as far as trans people in sports is a tough one, but there's always a fix to everything. We all understand that we all want to be a part of something, right? But sometimes we can't always be a part of something. Me as a person of color, you know, 
50, 60 years ago, couldn't play MLB baseball. So I had to be in a Negro League. You understand? Yeah. But through time, things change. But we need to learn how we're going to combat these problems and to and to be accept, ac- accepted. Years ago, 20 years ago, you couldn't walk down the street holding your partner's hand in New York City. Yeah. Now you can. You understand? Yeah. So we have moved forward and it's a marathon. We can't just snap our fingers and make it happen. We, the new generation is way too spoiled with what they have received, you know, being openly gay in high school or middle school when little old me couldn't, <laughs> yeah, little no. old Seneth couldn't, <laughs> little old Xavier couldn't. Mm-hmm. You know well, what I'm I w- saying? I, I, I was at the end and, and got assaulted on, on campus. and You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Things have, things happen, but you take your time. We have to make sure that we think very clearly with what we want and we get what we want, but be smart about it. Yeah. We can't be always aggressive about it. Well, I think that's the key it. is compromise. Yeah. Right? Well, that's like, there's this concept. The Negro League. Yeah. That's why I brought I mean, up the Negro League. That's a compromise. They knew that they couldn't play regular baseball, even though they knew they were 100% better than them. So what they did, they compromised. They made their own league. Yeah. And guess what? It was a couple better. years later, oh, oh, Jackie Robinson. Booyah! You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we just got to compromise, man. We really do. I agree. It's sad. It's sad what's happening now. It's just sad. You know, we have people, we have friends. I have friends who are married that they can be a potential where they aren't married anymore because of the thing, how radical people are behaving because yeah. of what they want and they're trying to take it forcefully. Do you know how easy people can take things away from anybody? You know how quickly anybody can take your life? You know how easy anybody can take your rights? We can go back in time and all become slaves. Well, I'm talking about myself. You know, things like that can change. Things well, like that can happen. Yeah, I mean, so and I've actually seen a lot of like tweets and stuff on Twitter and people speaking out about if you don't think that what is going on with trans people can happen to you, you are sorely mistaken. So all the people out there that are saying, LGB without the T y'all are idiots because eventually it's going to be LG without the B or G without the L. <laughs> like, Yeah. You know, the problem is, you know, also what the problem is that we're all, we're always trying to fight against the opposite, right? The opposite is the norm, the straight people, Right and try to solve all these issues we have with them, but never never sit down and try to figure out our own issues, the, the segregation yeah. that happens in our own community. You know what I'm saying? I can't go, for example, there's a club called The Eagle. I can't walk into The Eagle and think that I'm going to be a, a nice piece of meat. The Eagle's an all-white club bar. Do you think I'm going to get hit on in The Eagle? No, I'm going to get looked at wrong. So we need to fix these problems before we go out in the world and try to fix other people's problems. Let's fix ours first. Yeah. Stupid. So dumb. That's really still a thing in like 2023. It's still a thing in 2023. Yeah. I, there's black parties, yeah. the Latino parties, there's white parties. Yes, there are parties that th- there's people that come together, but segregation still happens. No matter if you're white, black, Latino, black Twitter. gay, straight, you know, a lot of people feel a certain type of way when straight people come into gay clubs. Yeah. That's still segregation, however you look at it. We are supposed to be welcoming. We're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to be positive. We're supposed to be all of the above, everything that they are not. But we are exactly like them. I guess, like, for me, and it, I guess it just depends on where you're at in the States. Like, because I, I went to school in San Antonio for college, and the gay clubs there, like, it was a big mix. Like, the main one back then was uh bottom exchange not bottom it, exchange just to clarify <laughs> bon, i got it bonham exchange it's a historical figure in texas mm-hmm. uh, that club was like super popular there were a lot of straight people that would go to that club all the time there were people of color all over the place i mean san antonio was it's a mountain pretty, pot. yeah it's a pretty diverse town and that i actually love that i joined a, a hispanic fraternity and, and yeah, I mean, there's still... I mean, you're Mexican passing. 
No. <laughs> it, maybe if I get enough sun, but no. Yeah. That was a joke. That was a bad joke. Yeah, that was no. a bad joke. It happens, no. but also, son, it all depends on the. It all depends on the people you know, right? People are gonna go where people are familiar with. So maybe the people you were going to these clubs are the kind of people that do want inclusivity, right? But that doesn't. That doesn't. It's not saying that it's not a thing, right? Yeah. There probably is a club in San Antonio where you walk in and there's only two black guys. You know, I could, yeah, I mean, I could see that. That's just a thing. There's also a lot of. I do know, like in San Antonio, I do know that, like, the city itself had some segregation on where people lived. Like, the east side of San Antonio was predominantly black people. Um, uh, every east side, t- any east side, yeah. any city is POC. Why that is. And our first house was in don't know, the east side. But yeah, I happen to agree with Mars. At least that's been my experience. The, the it is the experience and it is a fact as far as all all ghettos are on the east but the terminology in new york and the reason why it's on the east is because when the garbage would be disposed the wind flows towards east west to east right so, so that's why it was there it's actually bullshit. counterpoint i think in orlando it's west as far as the wind or the ghetto? Well, the ghetto. Division Avenue, the west side of Division Avenue. Oh, is... I know what you're talking about. And also in Palm Beach. Because West Palm Beach is a slum. But Palm Beach is lifestyles of the rich and famous. You're right. Yeah, and West Palm Beach, east, the east side of West Palm Beach is gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. And then I went into the west side and I'm like, well, here's my people. <laughs> <laughs> here's my people. This is where I belong. <laughs> Because I, funny enough, when I, last time I went to once Palm Beach, I went to my favorite uh, spot to cap, grab a snack after the gym. It's called Tropical Cafe. They have a lot of those in New York, but they have those in Florida too. And there was this black girl who was attending me and I was asking her, like, what do you guys do for fun here? And she was like, well, around here? And she was like, and I was like, yeah, around here. She was like, nothing around here. And I'm like, are you serious? She was like, yeah, we mostly live on the, like, like past there. She said like all the way over there. And I'm just like, it's that bullshit I'm, ta- I'm saying. It's that bullshit I'm talking yeah. about. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. This little ass girl, she's 16 years old, and she already knows that she's segregated. She already knows that sh- she knows where she belongs, and she knows where she doesn't belong. In 2023. Well, there are a lot of conversations that happen in situations. For example, you mentioned a club in San Antonio where you walk into the club, and regardless of what else is going on, there's only two black guys, Right. So when I heard that, I started thinking in my head about what other people hear when they hear about the disenfranchised Black experience. And there is a school of thought amongst honest white people that they are desensitized to to the knowledge of the disenfranchised African-American experience, Black experience. So it's not that it falls on deaf ears, but... It's just, they're desensitized to it. They've heard it so much and they've heard the same thing so much. It almost sounds like rhetoric. It's background noise at this point. So why am I saying all this is because it's still an issue, but is it still being treated like an issue or is it, has it been all but swept under the carpet, right? Swept under the carpet. Here's another issue that's still an issue that's currently so far under the carpet that when's the last time anyone ever mentioned the phrase Native American? I want, I want a month and a year. It's probably been probably three years since I've heard that term. And that was because of a friend that I made and he was a Native American. James? So I listen to NPR, so I do hear the term Native American oh, here we American go. quite frequently. Okay, well, <laughs> come on, yeah. woke. You listen woke to NPR. Yeah, so I'll... But I listen to everything. Like, I, I will listen to NPR when I'm in the car, like, on the way to work if it's a short drive. But then I'll also sit down and watch, like, the opposite side of the spectrum of Fox News just to see what kind of conversation I oh. might have with my dad. But I right. listen to NPR to know how to speak to my mom. Yeah. I'll watch Fox News to see how to talk to my dad. Do you know what Breakfast Club in the morning is? No. Have you ever heard the name Charlemagne the God? Charlemagne the God, baby. Have you? I believe so. Okay. 
uh, what he had an MTV, he had a whole show. It was called Guy Code. And he had a couple of other things that he did on MTV as well. He wrote a book. There's a very famous show. You can find the you can find the video broadcast on YouTube, Breakfast Club in the Morning. Is it Hot 97? Hot 97, Hot 97 baby. Breakfast Club in the, the Morning. Best radio yeah. in the world. What I'm illustrating, and I'm not trying to make you the butt of anything, but here's my illustration. Mars and I, we're very familiar with this. Millions and millions of Americans are. We're we're like the best of friends, right? So, but you are not. There's the divide. And it circles back to what I was saying about when's the last time you heard the phrase Native American? That's also a situation that is never truly and authentically dealt with. To yeah. th- there's still communities of Native American people living in extreme poverty, in some cases worse than African American people. Because at least some of the times, if you're African American in the country and you live in extreme par- poverty, the government's providing you with a government maintained building to live in. Some of these people who live on the res live in shack. Depending well, on the entire those yeah, cultures yeah. and languages yeah. just absolutely obliterated from the face of the planet. Right. Uh, so basically, I skipped back to a disenfranchised people, African-Americans, and then I said, okay, well, it's a problem. We're not dealing with that problem. We never have, and people are desensitized to the very mentioning that it is a problem. I substantiated that by saying there was a problem before that the problem with what happened to the Native Americans in this country. And that's, you know, you might not have heard that phrase for three or four or five, six, 10 years, who knows? Do those people even exist anymore? Do we even actually know that they exist in the original state that they were before the Trail of Tears? A lot of the issues in our country still- oh, We know that they're worse off than, than when that well, happened. Well, they are. There was just so many atrocities. Yeah. A lot of our issues in our not country are not talked about. And then sometimes they're talked about so much in the exact same way as an edification, kind of like, here's some crumbs for the table, snack on that. You know, we, yeah. we've talked about your issues or let's, uh, you know, let's race swap in a movie. Let's make Cleopatra black. Let's make all of Egypt African. Let's do that. That'll make it better. That'll satisfy the African-American community. That'll show that we care. That's what people of color get sometimes in this country. So those issues need to be addressed first or as well as the LGBT, et cetera, community. I think it's all not on the same page, but the next page is LGBT, et cetera. The first, you know. It's just minorities. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Plain and simple. So we can't have a conversation about one and completely gla- glaze and, over another because there's racism within our own community. Oh, is that God, I, said, I said it. How often? Yeah, no, I mean, Grindr removed, uh, there used to be a, like an ethnicity or race right. classification on Grindr and they removed it. Right. And, and people, uh, I think they started doing a better job about like banning accounts that do things like um, white only or black only or, you know, like, like race based, like, decisions right but no i mean to your point like i have to try to help my father understand and and it's it's difficult to get through because there's a lot of uh, prejudice there's a lot of uh, racism that is just under uh, it i don't think he intends maliciousness but it's that he's so misinformed uh, and has opinions that just we know aren't true there. And sorry. Oh, I was just going to finish my thought. The, the, a lot of white people, shame on white people. The seat is a lot of, <laughs> oh, no, not shame on white people, but continue. Go ahead. <laughs> no, a lot of white people fail to understand or don't see because of the way our education system is structured that, the things that happened in the past, the common response is going to be, well, that got resolved back in the 50s right. or, or that got resolved back then. Yeah. But the problem is, is that it didn't just magically overnight get resolved. There were leftovers of racism and racist institutions 
redlining and I mentioned Division Avenue. I mean, how sad is it that you can clearly see segregation in a modern city based on a road that's named fucking Division Avenue? Well, that's the South for you, baby. Have you ever been like, to Martin Luther King Avenue Drive Court in any me, city? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I completely agree. I think it's absolutely atrocious. Yeah. Sure. And it's hard to have a conversation with somebody that's older. Uh, stuck in their ways. Who's stuck in their ways, who has those prejudices, who you know has that racism kind of built into their identity. It's hard to explain that in a way that they understand. There's a big thing, and this will be my last thought. There's a big thing that really bothers me that I hear a lot in like professional circles. I hear a lot of people professionally talking about how, you know, well, white people are going to be replaced. And that is one of the most absurd arguments or statements that I think somebody can make. Like this fear mongering of like minorities suppressing you. And that comes from them, their mouths. Yeah. I've I, never heard a POC say, well, we're going to wipe out the whites or they're going to disappear. What the? But things we, like we that are said. About you, dog. But yeah, but things like that are said. Yeah. The, the interview that we did with Victoria Peltier, the uh, last two episodes, the two episodes ago, she's involved in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And she always points out, and it's not just a race thing. It's not just a sexuality thing. It's also a, a gender thing. You know, women are underrepresented in, in, in the top, in the Fortune 500 companies. I want to, I can't remember what her stat. She knows the stat like the back of her hand because it's her thing. But it goes in Fortune 500. Nineteen black executives out of eighteen hundred CEOs in the Fortune five hundred. That's being atrocious. That's a very small percentage. That, it's being atrocious. I mean, how many people of color are in organized sports in America, and how many people of color own a piece of the team? Right, let's not count Jay Z, okay? Because he's basically a billionaire. But how many people of color own a portion of the team? In hip hop, R and B music, there have been many celebrities, musicians, and performers who have top accolades, accolades, excuse me. But who runs those companies? I think it was Snoop Dogg who talked about getting his rights back for his music. Yeah, he doesn't um, own his masters, if I remember correctly. I thought he bought them back. He might have. I might be thinking yeah, of I think old I... news. Yeah. yeah, I think I saw him on a, a podcast talking about this, where yeah. he basically said, I bought the shit back, and then I started making some changes. He he talked about how little he was paid for all the stuff from the streaming right. apps, like Spotify, like it was a really small amount. He said, yeah, I'm going to pull that shit off of there. And he said, and when you want it back, you can talk to me about a better number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take, take matters into your own yeah. hands. Absolutely. Absolutely. But... Just to touch base on 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 that on the topic a little bit before this about the whole segregation and racism and all of that, it's not just whites. True, and people need to understand this too. It's not just True. whites. Dominicans are racist. Puerto Ricans are racist. Mexicans are racist. Whites are racist. Blacks, African Americans, racist. Everybody is racist. Anybody who sits there and say, well, only whites are racist, it's literally eating bullshit. Right. It's literally, it's like the most bullshit ever. And I think the problem, I don't know how to fix it because I, I'm not in the, I'm the, in, the, uh, in the sector of fixing world peace or whatever that is. Not, that's not my profession. But what? we need that's to get what to we the hired root you of the for. <laughs> Absolutely fuck? Not. No, not me. Not me. Not so ever. But we need to stop pointing fingers and need to start fixing within ourselves, right? Because we can all sit here and say, oh, I'm not a racist, right? I'm not calling nobody a racist, but I'm saying we can sit here and say we're not racist, but you do like what you like, right? Some people just only date lighter skin tones. Some people only like darker skin tones. Some people like in the middle. But that's not saying that you're a racist, right? 
but you have your own, I guess. Practice. Can I sign up to be equal opportunity? Not at all. Sorry. <laughs> no. I'm like the cocatinums. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I want to end that conversation there because I think that was the longest conversation. That was the longest topic of the conversation. Oh, yeah. Of the podcast. Yeah. But things need to happen. That's it. Things need to happen. And stop pointing fingers and just look within and see what what you can change. But the th- in order for things to happen, we have to have open dialogue. And again, I'm going to kind of go back to the example of of kind of liberal rhetoric. We can't be shitty to each other about things. Yeah, we can't. Do you, we can't. Do you remember I was telling you we about, can't. I won't go into great detail, so you don't have to take anything out. But I told you about an experience I had. I was bored, hopping in the discords and other servers, right? The super huge wins with like a dozen or more uh vcs right ended up talking to a couple of people who then later on halfway through the conversation identified as teenagers one of them was being a horrible troll and a bit of an ageist right um those two kids part of the community yep Part of the community. Horrible. I rest my case. I rest my case. Horrible people. Part of the community. They need to stop trying to fix what the fuck is happening outside and let's fix what the fuck is happening inside right now. Currently. Still to this day. 2023. April 29th at 8.39 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. We got So we got people being horrible as adults. Now, something that's been made very real to me. There, there is our teenage youth in our community are openly being horrible. Dude, teenagers are mean as fuck. <laughs> but to They're the rest of us. Horrible, dude. <laughs> Wait. You know what's the bad you know what's the worst part is that they're like the worst. So well not all of them, right? Because right? I'm not gonna sit here and say they're all the worst, right? But the ones that are bad and, and are shit, I don't even know how to wash their ass correctly. Right. And you want to talk you want you want to talk crap to me? Let me buy you a uh, dove soap. I'm kinda like almost to the point where I don't even care if somebody tries to cancel me anymore. Yeah. Well, cancel culture, that's another well, that's a beautiful topic right there, cancel culture. Well, that'll be what we talk about on the next episode when you guys hop back in to continue this conversation. Love that. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There was one more thing. 90 Day Fiance. Have you guys what? watched this show? 90 Day Fiance. I love that show. It's, it's I the love best. That show. It is so good. I love 90 Day so Fiance. So good. And I'm so far behind. I haven't watched for like what Months, a year. So you've never watched 90 Day Fiance, Seneth? I see I you typing. Think, I don't think I have. Really? Is this the show that had like I, I remember there being some kind of show that had this dude that was like not attractive. Had no neck. No neck guy. No neck guy. What was this? No neck Tom guy. Phil. I forgot his dumbass name. <laughs> is that this? The same yeah, show. It's the same. Not okay. Same show. Same yeah. show, not the guy. But the whole premise is people establish relationships over the internet with people who are outside of the country or outside of their home. Well, I'm glad we're talking about this show because we have a we have an expert on that topic <laughs> sitting here. Where? where? <laughs> what do I don't? Hi, do? Xavier. Oh, my goodness. You're on the hot seat. Yes. No, yes, ma'am. Sir. That yes. is another. Yes, sir. It, it might not be another continent, but it is another country. <laughs> Y'all need a passport. Mm-hmm. Nah, mm-hmm. How many? How long has it been? We we'll change the title right now. Anyway, so this show was very entertaining, and <laughs> I believe that it's probably still as entertaining. I was wanting to see. Yeah, no, I love that show. Love and you, Bubba. There's a reason why I love that show. <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> There's a reason why I love that show. I don't know how long I have, but I'm gonna make it quick. There's a reason why I love that show because I am from a foreign country, originally. I am Dominican, right? I'm not. I was born in the United States. I am an American citizen. I am Dominican American. I'm not Latino. I mean, I'm not Hispanic. I'm Latino. So seeing other people flying from other countries and marrying in another foreign country, it's something normal for me because I am foreign. Right. Right. Um, that's how my mom got here. She <clears throat> married an Italian man. She's in the States now because of the Italian man. She got here when she's 18. She's now Look, 16, Italians have it going on. Six. Relax, buddy. <laughs> Relax. But it's something that it is very entertaining. It is very educational. And, you know, some people do find love 
And then some people Next. are just there for the shits and giggles and have no necks <laughs> and uh, try to date out of their league. <laughs> out of their league they, off you know, planet. Look, I, that, <laughs> I, Andrew, Andrew watched that show. I, I I didn't even like see it for the longest time. Like I could tell this guy looked busted without seeing him just because of the way he sounded. But I... I can't. It's one. Th- I can't. It's one thing to be. Fun fact: the article says in the clip, Scott's visit Lydia in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> there's a lot I of that. that. There is a lot of that. It is one yeah. thing to be. Uh, I will. I will call it socially unattractive. That's one thing. It's another thing entirely to be socially unattractive and to be intellectually unattractive. Meaning that. You're, you're visually unattractive and you're also intellectually unattractive. I think at that point, you know, I give a little bit of latitude to the people who might want to shy away from you, you know, because I can have a conversation and never see a person and they could look like a hunchback of Notre Dame or whatever. That doesn't matter to me. And I could meet them and they could look like that. But if they've entertained my mind. That's a man of God. He is, but if, anyways, he's on. <laughs> If they've entertained and my is... mind, that's all that matters. But this guy, I wish I remembered Frank yeah. or whatever his name was. He was a dozen dumpster fires. And he just continued <laughs> to bring he was, yes, he was. a potato. That was a chicken nugget that was <laughs> uh, <laughs> Intellectually, you know no. what I'm saying? Like, fuck looks, right? Because it's not always about looks. It is. It's not always it about is. Looks. Intellectually... Potato. I'm gonna tell you chicken nugget under the sea. Under the sea. They owe uh, you know they owe cheese. Left I'm gonna out tell overnight. you something my grandmother used to say. <laughs> this might this not my opinion, but my grandma used to say it. It made perfect sense to me. <laughs> it helped me deal with certain trolls. And that girl, that girl right there, she say right there. That girl right there, she can either be fat or she can be a bitch, but she can't be a fat bitch. <laughs> And that made so oh, wow. much sense to me. This lady, this old lady, it felt like so much wisdom. And at first I was horrified, but I just started to think about it. Like, if you were physically unattractive, you're going to be mean on top of that? Yo, he was so mean to that yes. poor girl. That's him. Look at Big Ed. Look at that. Potato. Look, look at her. my God! Look how gorgeous this woman is. Yeah, and then pretty. he had the nerve. He was a horrible to treat- person to her. Uh, what was her name? Is it in the, she was from the Philippines. Is it in the article? Was it where? Where is her name? Oh no, well, Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. That's a different uh, girl, nice. I think. That's a different girl. The, the Hold fr- on. You're talking I about the first girl Ed. from the Philippines. Yeah, Ed, yeah. Day, yeah, from the Philippines. Hold on, Philip Filipino. Boom. One second. I got you right now. Uh uh-uh. uh. And she, you know, again, she, you know, she's. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Her name was uh, Rose. 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 Rose, the Filipino. She was so sweet. Yeah, he, Rose Marie. He was saying stuff to her like, will you get tested? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> did you get tested, Potato? <laughs> what? Uh, Is that the uh, yeah, audacity? Test his ass he, for yeah. starch. <laughs> oh, that was the wrong thing. <laughs> How do I do this? Hold on. But yeah, Jesus. I, I we're not paid Are you to, to send me a virus. We're not paid to rip this show, but it is a wonderful show. It's it, I think of it as a comedy. It's hilarious. It's a comedy, but then there's like you know, it's real to a certain degree. There she you is. Know, some people yeah, I mean, are she was actually trying too. to find love. You know what I'm saying? It's beautiful. But then you have the gold diggers that it's like an obvious. You just you're there for the money, yeah. honey, because you're looking like a whole shiny lamp and. There's a wooden stick next to you. Yeah. Yeah. We can put two and two together. Remember that oh. Audi? The one with with the Jamaican yes, guy? Yes, with the Jamaican guy. We need, you know what? We're gonna have to binge this. We're gonna have to binge this. <laughs> we might need to do a watch gonna, episode. And, a watch episode and then ten days, you know, ten episodes later have another conversation about 90 Day Fiance. So <laughs> Senef can, you know, so so James can intertwine yes. with us. Yes. Connect, you know, connect the knots. Absolutely. I, I just, but I don't, I don't know that it's my, my cup of tea. That's what will make it great. Just, <laughs> we just want to see your reaction. That's your reaction. <laughs> that's my reaction. That's your reaction. 
fucking screaming go. Oh, you know what else we should Yelling do? Yelling out a potato. They took it off the air because there was this show running concurrently with another show. I don't know if it was on the same network, but Married at First Sight. I used to watch them together. Yeah, it was kind of like the same thing. <laughs> it was. Though. But the only look, thing is it wasn't foreign. I don't get but this But they stuff. had, I mean, they had a good budget, though, because remember, Married at First Sight, they meet each other at the wedding, they get married, and they... Everything else falls into place afterwards. They have counseling sessions with the couples. They pay for their dates. They go water skiing. They go to island resorts, all to help them make it work. You know, yeah. I thought it was entertaining. At least it you, was entertaining, you, but at least the concept of 90 Fiance is like these people already knew each true, other before true, then. True, true. And then they just had 90 days to get married. And the reason why it's 90 days is because of the whole. Um, bringing them back to the country or them staying in their country and right. it, it's like that whole law 90 shit. days to make it so, work yeah yeah uh, so what is the show it was like your perfect match or whatever oh there's a show that i wanted to talk about Sorry. well we're out of time yeah are we we're out of time <laughs> i thought it was an hour and 30 minutes oh no bro it's, it's like an hour and 15 usually Oh, really? Okay. We should oh, wrap man. here and let's talk about that show next week. Okay. All right. I'll put a pin on it. I'll put a pin on it. Hey, it's such on. a great thing. Really? I mean, two minutes? <clears throat> uh, two minutes for a teaser. Two minutes for a teaser. Okay. So there's this show called X on the Beach. It's on MTV, right? And the reason why yep. I'm bringing up the show is because it is a kind of dating kind of show. It's something similar, but not really. But it is a dating show. It is on MTV. But what I do find that is very important is that it is a mainstream TV show right. in a mainstream network that has a trans woman in that oh. TV show. Oh, nice. And that trans woman, oh, I love you so much, Lola, is one of my, I know her personally, and she's gorgeous. I love her to death. But it's important. So that's the teaser, and we'll talk about it on the all next right, one. All right. Boom. I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> Make sure to join us. <laughs> you can't see this if you're listening, but Mars has literally just turned around in his chair and is facing the opposite direction. Let me know when we're done. Okay, I'll let you know. Make sure to join us on the next podcast episode. Everybody can join. We record Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Next week, we're going to have a special guest. The week after that, we'll have a special guest. And I believe we'll have a- another special guest. We'll have two special guests on the 13th. We'll do a-, a second recording on that day outside of the normal uh, 7 p.m. on Saturday. We'll announce that in the Discord channel. Anybody can join. We really want to hear different topics, different things to talk about. If you think that the episode is boring, you can change that. Yes. Uh, we want to hear your voice. You can tell us to talk about you know, no neck guy and Mars's haircut <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> whatever you want us to. Yeah. So make sure to check out the discord, discord.gg slash LGBT fam and submit your podcast episodes. And until next time.